Hey everyone, Mehran is here and I am back with another DaVinci Resolve 20 cinematic color grading tutorial for the latest cinematic portrait video which I posted recently which I shot with my Sony a7 IV in S-Log3. Now here is the catch, I use a dehancer for the final effect, a plugin that instantly makes your footage look cinematic. Since I started using the dehancer plugin, my color grading workflow has honestly leveled up completely. And if you guys are interested too, you can use my coupon code MEHRANHD to get 10% off out of your first plugin purchase. No more talking, let's jump right into the tutorial to see what we can achieve. So I have imported my footages into the DaVinci Resolve and since they were shot in 50 frames per second with Sony a7 IV and S-Log3, I first conformed them to 25 frames per second so we get that slow motion look and we create a new timeline and I call it tutorial, I turn off the use project settings and for the format and timeline frame rate I set it to 25 frames per second and for the timeline color space I select like the DaVinci white gamut intermediate so we get the most flexible dynamic range and color space while doing the editing process. Now as you see we are in the color page of DaVinci Resolve 20 and I parked the footage somewhere good which we have the model and the space and I want to create 9 nodes here by pressing the Alt S you create nodes in the DaVinci Resolve and I want to label the nodes the first one is going to be CST then we have lift gamma and gain, we have exposure and white balance, we have color slice tool which is really amazing, I tell you why and then we get the curves and after that we get the vignette which I really like and use it for all of my color grading projects and then I create a sharpen node. After that we have the dehancer plugin and in the last node we have the CSD the color space transform. Now I want to drag my color space transform effect to the first node and the last node so we can properly convert our footage from the S-Log3 to the DaVinci wide gamut zone so we select the input color space as the S gamut tree and the input gamma as the S-Log3 and for the output color space I select DaVinci wide gamut and for the output gamma I will select the DaVinci Intermediate because we want to work in a DaVinci wide gamut zone. I set the tone mapping to the none for the first CST and for the last CST I choose the input color space as the DaVinci wide gamut because we are working in that zone before we get to the last CST and the input gamma is DaVinci Intermediate. Now for the output color space I select the Rec 709 and the output gamma which is gamma 2.4 which is uh, suitable for exporting for social media and etc. Now we parked the footage somewhere good and as you see the footage was overexposed by around two stops so we get the most noise free footage with our S-Log3 so I go to my exposure and white balance and to my HDR wheels here I can bring back the exposure down and we achieve the details back and as you see the footage is now properly balanced in terms of exposure it was around minus 2.6 which gave me lots of of details in the shadows and we got those noise free shadows here and for the saturation I do not want the footage to be so much saturated because in this color grading I want to work more on the tones so I decrease the saturation a little bit so we get the less saturated colors so we can work more on the tones as you know most cinematic footages do not have so much color they insist on tones rather than colors now for the lift and gamma and gain I want to decrease my lift so we get a contrasty shadow and I increase the gamma to bring some of the details back in the skin and we have a brighter skin since this is a portrait video and just a little bit of gain to bring that punch back to the highlights and I always use the mid-tone detail for the skin in my portrait videos we get that soft dreamy skin for the portrait video which is really nice and I really love it it's kind of retouching in a simple way which can be done really fast and after 
like that, we want to decrease the highlights a little bit so we bring back some of the details in the skin if we lost it. But uh, I try to keep my S-Log exposure with the zebras so we do not miss any of the highlights. Now for the color slice tool, as you see, is my favorite tool in the DaVinci Resolve 20. And here I want to play with the yellows in order to change the hue of those yellows and make them more green. And as you see, it has a more punchy vibe and makes the footage a little bit cooler but since we are doing a warm color grading creates a beautiful color contrast and as you see you can play with the density to make the greens more dense which is really nice it brings the eye to the subject more when you make the background colors more dense and less saturated as you see if i show you the before and after what i did here was to make those greens more dense so we have more luminosity on the skin of the model and the eye goes to the skin of the model which is really nice and here it was for the yellows and after that they can play with the greens again to achieve that same look for the greens and as you see it might not make a big difference in this footage but again it's a huge one as you see when you do multiple colors together the background becomes more darker the luminosity decreases and here for the magenta for the flowers I want to bring them towards the pink a little bit so they become more of a spring look and as you see they become more pink and I love this look for this footage and I want to increase the saturation a little bit they become more punchier in this way they are more of a foreground element so the greens were a background element now the flowers are foreground I make them saturated so the eye of the viewer would go through the flowers and the model which is really nice the background became darker now the foreground is lighter and here we created a beautiful color contrast and the luminosity contrast which is really important in my portrait color grading workflow both in video and portrait photography and here for the vignette note which is my favorite part I want to create so much more depth which brings the eye of the viewer to the center and as you see the subject pops out of the picture and it just makes a huge difference it is one of the most important parts of my color grading workflow the vignette it is really important in my opinion and i do it every time and i am really pleased with the result after the vignette i want to go back to the curves here the curves makes a huge difference as you will see by adding contrast to my shadows those s curves which are famous as you see it makes your footage so much cinematic by adding default anchors you can get that uh, points there and by decreasing the shadows you see you bring so much punch and the footage becomes so much more beautiful and more alive and it is so nice the colors become more punchy so by adding depths and contrast to the shadows you are getting more beautiful colors too which is really nice and here for the next sharp note i want to add a little bit of sharpness to the eyes so the eyes pop out of the picture which is really important for those portrait videos it was shot in 4k but again when you add that sharp the eyes pop and it is much more nicer in this way and you will see the result on the YouTube which you will see a very sharp portrait video which is really nice now we get to the Dehancer plugin as I said the Dehancer plugin is my favorite plugin in the DaVinci Resolve and it has changed my color grading workflow since I got it and it makes a huge difference and as you see I set the input color space to the DaVinci white gamut because we are in that zone and the first thing I'm going to do is to set the print on the Kodak 2383 film and it is a little bit powerful so I want to decrease the output I didn't use a film emulation on this one just the print Kodak 2383 and it is really beautiful it gives a beautiful contrast to my footage and as you see I just want to add a little bit of tonal contrast it is my favorite option in Dehancer plugin it adds a beautiful contrast to my midtones and my midtones just pop and for the expand option you can always add contrast to your black points which is a really nice option it is a little bit similar to the log wheels in DaVinci Resolve and here is the magic of Dehancer the color head which adds a beautiful tonality to your shadows midtones and highlights and as you see I said I want to make this uh, footage 
warmer we have a summer look so we add yellow and by adding yellow you get a little bit of green so i want to take the magenta slider to the left and remove some of that green and just by removing a little bit of red we get a beautiful balance and as you see it becomes really beautiful soft portrait video which is my favorite look for this one and here is an important feature which is the shadow tone mid tones and highlight tones and as you see by moving those sliders we get that prominent tone in the color head which is the yellow and it just adds yellow or decreases the yellow from shadows mid tones and highlights by adding the shadow tones you get those yellows and by decreasing you get those blues and as you see for the mid tones again i want to add yellows so i increase the mid tones and we get a beautiful yellow tone in my mid tone and again in the highlights by adding you get yellow by decreasing you get blue and as you see i added yellow to my shadows mid tones and highlights and overall you see how much difference we made and how much dense our colors became in this uh, color grading process by using the color head option in the dehancer plugin and that effect which we got with the film grain here again makes your footage so much filmic and you get that nostalgic vibe uh, which uh, is something between the digital and analog you can always uh, move between these words really easily by using the dehancer plugin and here the bloom option which is my favorite for portrait videos it gives a soft dreamy look a halo around the face of the model and again i use the vignette one time more and just makes a huge difference vignette is one of my most favorite features as i said it makes a huge difference by itself and here was a dehancer and you can always go back to your previous notes and make adjustments if you think the contrast is not so much and you can add by going back which is really nice option which we get with the davinci resolve the nodes are always a stack on top of each other's and you can just change them whenever you want and you will get the result in the end and as you see here is our overall before and after you can always play with the contrast to your liking hope you guys like this look which i achieved in this davinci resolve color grading tutorial and that's it guys you just saw how powerful the dehancer plugin can be when color grading s log 3 footage in davinci resolve 20. if you want to achieve the same cinematic look do not wait and use my affiliate link placed in the description and upgrade your color grading workflow thank you so much for watching this color grading tutorial guys i truly appreciate all the love and support which you give to my channel and i hope to see you soon goodbye